And now we have a Rahul Agarwal about how can API developers uh, increase their productivity. Hello, Rahul. Hey, how are you? How are you? Yes, are you able to hear me properly? Yes, we screen? are. Yes, we can hear you, and now we can see your screen. It's full screen. It's perfect. Enjoy your time on stage and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mehdi. Thanks a lot, and thank you everyone for joining the session. Um, so, and it's the second day in API days, and I'll be talking about how to increase API developer productivity. We have 20 minutes to, uh, today, uh, which I'll present the content for, and please let your questions in the chat and the last five minutes I can answer as many as I can. So with that, let's let's start with the session. Uh, I'm looking uh, at three main topics or three main sections to cover in the next 20 minutes. Kind of take a step back and see what is the need of uh, increasing the API developer productivity, then provide you some guiding thesis, how to think about it, and then introduction to tools which are which can help you increase those productivity productivity items for the API developer. But before I begin, I, I want to quickly mention that why am I qualified to talk on this topic? And the uh, simple an uh, answer is that uh, I've been building and launching new technology platforms almost all my life, and currently I'm the I help customers all around the world at Boomi for their API management needs. I'm currently the product manager for the API management platform at Boomi. So with that, let's look at uh, what's happening in the market and what is the need of thinking about uh, developer productivity. And the simple answer is that um, APIs are the information highway and the backbone of the connected world, which I think everyone looking at the session would agree since you are on API days and this is the second day. But there are three things you need to uh, keep in mind as you look at this graphic is that there has been pro proliferation of web APIs, which is 10x within the last 10 years. The important thing to note there is that this are, these are web APIs, and web APIs are 20% of all the APIs in an enterprise ecosystem. So just imagine the magnitude and, and the real picture. So this is the tip of the iceberg, literally. And lastly, we have the API-only businesses, such as Stripe and Tulio. The valuation of such companies has also increased 10x, not in the last 10 years, but in the last five years. So just to say that we are all grounded in reality and we are on the same page that why are we talking about API developers? And that is important to understand is that if, if such proliferation of APIs is happening, the the onus on uh, growth, the onus on revenue is on the API developer, whether it's software companies or companies trying to adopt softwares. So it is very important for us to see uh, what is a typical API developer journey. If you are an API developer yourself, you might empathize with it. If you are learning API development, uh, this is something for you to think about. And if you are trying to build tools for the API developer, then also you need to be thinking about the user journey. At one end, we have the application service, which is the user. How are you going to communicate uh, to the internet? And on the other end, you have the data source. And in the middle, um, the first step after uh, is the de developer has to think about uh, the data model, that uh, how, how will uh, the code interact with the world? What are the underlying aspects to it? And, and the journey really starts there. Unless if you're not thinking about the data model first, then your API will not be effective enough. And only then would you start building the business logic on top of the data model, because at the end of the day, there has to be some business value or customer value attached to the APIs. Otherwise, there's no point of creating an API. Just connect two systems together, and you are done. And only after that will a developer start thinking about code generation. Uh, something which the developer is paid for by definition. And the journey does not start there. Oh, sorry, stop there. So after generation of code, there are important aspects before an API can reach the consumer. And those are deploying the API. And right now, we have so many deployment paradigms and patterns. So 
it's easy getting easier day by day uh, at the same time uh, you have to think about security and protection so only after you deploy uh, make sure the api is up running well and serving users all the time and then secured and protected are you able to complete this user journey so hopefully this uh, makes sense for most of the people in the session today now let's look at uh, you may think that that is enough for the developer to think about that user journey itself is so many things happening but the charter of innovation for the api developer is much much bigger as you can see the building blocks here uh, we looked at certain key responsibilities in the last slide but above that the developer needs to worry about the design of the system the scalability which data format to use to engage with the client how to effectively document that API. Without documentation, your API is a black box. Nobody will be able to understand that. How to monitor it and troubleshoot errors while engaging with consumers. It is a live product. People are using it. If you're not measuring stuff, if you're not looking at the error codes, if you're not looking at the traffic rate, there's no point of creating that API. So these are this is a charter of innovation. So if you're an API developer right now looking at the session and you're doing one or two blocks in this diagram, then you need to be thinking about the other blocks as well, because that's what your charter is as a software developer. And um, if you're trying to bring in APIs into your ecosystem, your uh, system, you're an architect or a manager right now, these are the things you need to worry that your development team is already engaged with or should be engaged with. So we looked at a lot, uh, I would say, about the user journey and the charter for innovation. Now let's look at what is keeping developers up at night. And this is uh, what I, I get paid for. This is what I help uh, developers all around the world. And my uh, engagement with developers and with the, with the different teams brings me to these three pain points which developers are facing. Uh, the first one is business impact. Uh, am I making an impact to the business? What is the value of the piece of code I'm writing today? Am I even helping business teams to go to market fast enough? And am I building something which is meaningful? That's the number one thing which developers worry about. They want to be directly related to business growth and revenue from the code that they're writing. Secondly, uh, the biggest um, worry with API developers is portability. There are so many frameworks, there are so many paradigms, there are so many languages out there. The system is getting complicated and difficult to manage as we are speaking. And developers say, most of the time, I end up doing boring stuff and putting plumbing together. I don't want to do that. I just want to focus on the business logic. And the third one is that whether you are in a small shop or a big shop, big company, small company, you will always be working with other developers. It would be in your own team or in a community. And your API does not work in a silo. So in this age of distributed teams, am I efficient enough to create value for my team? So we looked at the user journey. We looked at the charter for innovation for the developers. And now we looked at the top things which an API developer is suffering with. So what are the what is the solution? How do we go forward? And the answer is thinking about APIs as products and uh, which will help in developer productivity. So this is where I introduced the guiding thesis, uh, the, the three tenants which, which we are focusing to help developers uh, in those uh, in, in solving those pain points. And the first one is uh, ease of use and time to value. Uh, how to make it easy to configure and allow for rapid prototyping and launch is going to really add value to the developer ecosystem. Uh, should not spend time writing boilerplate code, as I've mentioned before as well. Secondly is open and neutral. So how to build on the great work of others while giving back to the community. 
and most importantly, not getting locked into one type of technology. So we have these mega vendors in the market right now, and they are selling everything out there in the market. So, but a small developer shop is needs has customized needs. So it's not that one mega vendor can solve all their problems. And there is a big debt you are also taking if you get all your features from one mega vendor is that you are trying to get logged in in that ecosystem. So be wary of that. And lastly, automation. Um, again, let's focus on what really matters. Let's focus on the creativity of the code. Let's not focus about plumbing. Let's not focus about um, error monitoring and things like that. So uh, I think artificial intelligence or machine learning is just uh, is here to say it is already implemented in different products. And uh, if you're a developer uh, using tools which will help you automate your pipeline, your code, is the really the way to go forward to add value uh, to the business. So with these three uh, tenets, I would want to introduce to you how to then navigate this problem and really increase your productivity. And the answer is simple. Uh, that is, work on these two aspects. All other things around the other building blocks I mentioned, there are tools out there to do all of that. There are people like me and the teams uh, I work with who are helping you with the other aspect. As a developer, just focus on the design and the business logic. If you are focusing on something else in this box, then maybe you are not doing the highest point of leverage you can do as a developer. So the takeaway is less of implementation, less of operations, more of design, and more of value. From this, the other activities in the stack sound like noise, and it is best to make them easy to do or automated. So now let's look into deep dive into API design because that's where the really the money lies. And what do I mean by API design? And so let's start thinking about it in a way that there are aspects which cannot be automated away. Just like it is almost impossible to automate a music symphony. That's why I use this picture on the right is that as an API developer, you are not writing code. You are you are stitching many systems together, uh, logic together, and trying to, in a way, create symphony for your users, for your business, for other applications. The job of the developer then becomes to effectively compose metadata and stitch together different parts to create an API that really make a difference. So the key parts that a developer is stitching together are the users, the actions, who are the actors, who are the um, users, are, who are the actors, and what are they doing, and how those actions culminate into processes that actually move a needle. So let me, let me pause here. I'm saying that focus on API design and business logic. If you are, if you have, if you have crossed that bridge with me, now let's look at API design. What does that mean? API design means these three aspects. If you are not thinking about the user or the action or the processes, your APIs are of no value. So let's look at a real world example to really think about these three aspects when you start designing APIs. I'll take an example of a drone delivery. Um, system, let's say you are in a company trying to help customers create a drone delivery because everyone wants shipment right now. They want it within an hour. So if you're going that way, we really need robots to do it for us. So let's look at the user in this example. And you might say the user is me or the person who's trying to get the product. But hey, there are other users in the system as well. There are drone. If you're an API developer, the drone is your first user. Then the backend command system is your next user. The customer who's getting the product is at a very late stage. So if you build an API for the end customer, you just forgot two main users in the system. Secondly, what actions uh, are you trying to do? Um, 
what are you trying to just get orders are you trying so the drone needs a route uh, how are you designing that how will you notify users and this is where you go into the microservices or the nano services part uh, the actions where you start thinking about the actions that's where the uh, breakage of system and services come into play so don't think about actions first think about users first who is making those actions users and then the actions would be very easy for you to think about the whole microservice nano service becomes easy when you think things from this aspect and lastly the processes uh the creativity as a developer that you would input uh optimizing routes managing inventory uh you build a very good api but it falls the drone falls on someone's head what's the use of the api so maintaining an altitude that's what i say that these are the things you should be focusing on not on deployment not on monitoring things like that which i expressed before so in the last uh, four or five minutes i have i will introduce to you one category on that building block uh, i i could go hours and hours on this topic but the first topic i will uh, leave at you to give you some visualization of what i mean is code generation because i think that's very close to your heart that's what you're paid for so let's look at how can we help you be more productive in code generation and there are three use cases which i want to take in code generation first is uh, um how to be program language agnostic by using tools to convert grammar or even designs to lexer and parser for different languages so use such tools right don't do that low level work and then use your time in something which is not valuable so if you're not using this already then please consider using it but this is one example of you to think how i can be more productive in code generation doesn't mean that you need to write end to end code all the time the second use case is how can we make it easier for creating front end applications that are most of the time a cumbersome activity who wants to write html code or css these days there are so many templates we can be generate using logic and metadata just use them if you're writing front end code in 2021 you are doing i think you're going backward <laughs> so if you if you are already on that journey using some uh, framework or tool out there good job but if you're not please do it today itself and third is runtime and server <laughs> lastly you you need a runtime for your code but then you need to do a lot of configuration the plumbing enormous amount of boilerplate code you have to write which port goes where how can that be taken away right so if you are feeling my, the pain points here just talking about it i can feel nervous about how the how many things you have to do while getting an api to the market and that's where i'm saying that none of this is based in theory uh we help you uh design those things this is real screenshots from an api i've uh, we have built in boomi so this is where um you can drag and drop visualize what you're trying to do with the logic this is a twilio callback service for example it describes the data flow it does manipulation outputs the result the developer still needs to do some coding which is the sql statement block which you can say there but that's it so we are saying low code which means that you still have to code something but the others can be automated away or can be done easily secondly database connections don't worry about it there are templates out there you can just drop down take any database you want and put the port number there we can automate that for you as well and you're all set to go and lastly there is a community of people doing the same thing you're doing you're not the only one trying to do sales order uh manipulation so let us do that mapping for you and just worry on your sql statement so that the in my analogy the drone does not fall on someone's head so these are the way of thinking about low code Uh, i hope you um, got what i was trying to say think about api design business logic start looking for tools and frameworks out there to make your life easier and uh, that's what i i think had for today again focusing on this diagram um please please focus on design and logic rest of the things leave it to tools and uh and companies such as ours to help you so with that uh, i come to the end of my presentation 
please have a read at this blog if you want to know more about this mindset uh, there is many blogs out there around building apis as products but this is my take on building apis as products you can go and find that on the boomi blog site and lastly you can go and check the product yourself um, at this link so that you can see how you can be more productive uh, so with that uh, this is what i had today i think i used my 20 minutes are there any questions which or doubts uh, mehdi are you still there yes i'm still there so uh, there is a question about the api product manager role uh do you train it from architect do you uh, hire it from uh, marketing uh, do you need the technical background so what would be your your recommendation about uh, hiring api product managers first question is why would you need an api product manager first of all is not that there is somebody subscribed uh, somebody said you know uh, an organization needs to have this role this role this role so you end up hiring those roles first of all right so yep. think about the api first what are you trying to build is your api trying to increase efficiency is your api trying to increase revenue is your api just an internal api right so if it is really something which needs a lot of uh, Uh, data analysis, lot of uh, there's lot of risk involved in creating that API. Then only start looking for a product manager. I would say. Uh, so that's my first point. It's like it's not default that you need a product manager in your uh, in your ecosystem. And how to get one? I think uh, the kind of API you're building. That's the answer. So if your API is about shipping API, the product manager needs to think about the shipper. so whether she is technical or not is important but it's more important that she's able to understand about what the api is meant for which is a user and if you're yep. building a software product which is this then definitely you need to understand that your end consumer is a developer so you don't understand the user then how can you say that you can't be technical while you are a product manager so it depends on the product and the api if that helps So we have a question: Who sh- who must be involved in two API design? Who must be involved? Yes. Yes. So, who is building the API? <laughs> is it you, the developer? Then who is answerable if the API something bad happens to the API or the API is not able to do the function? Who is responsible for it? So the answer is the developer. You cannot outsource the design to a product manager or an architect or a VP. or a business folk that's the main takeaway of this presentation is that developers need to start thinking about design and business logic and create apis which in a way maybe take this presentation as a leadership point for api developers is that you are the one who is designing good apis so focus on that let us do the boilerplate code work for you does that make sense Yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, and so we have another question: How critical it is to make the developer portal self-service? How difficult is it to make it self-service? How critical? How critical? Cr- critical for dev? I I think it. Yep. So almost all the tools out there have a self-service dev portal. So if you're building a dev portal yourself, then you are, again, going backwards, according to me. unless you are trying to build a spotify developer portal which is like one of the best in the world that needs your own development team unless you are a company like spotify with so many developers you don't need uh, to create your own developer portal there are at least 15 tools in the market to, which can do it for you yep. including ours <laughs> a yep. small plug there yeah no, yeah uh, that makes sense So I think we just arrived at uh, the end of our time. Thank you very much, Rahul, for being uh, with us. Thank you. And again, we'll be glad to invite you in other API conferences. Thank you, Mehdi, and best of luck, everyone. Take care.